So I've realized I really need to start YouTubing. And there's a lot of reasons for this. And the main reasons I thought before were, first of all, you're practicing your speech giving skills. You're practicing talking in front of a camera, therefore giving a performance. And you could give a speech for whatever reason to whatever people. The other thing is, oh, it's cool. You could document some sort of rise to greatness or something like that. Um, a lot of it is very deluded and egotistical and self-centered. But the one I've th been thinking about more recently is just the building a tribe aspect. So there's these YouTubers who do very well, but don't have the statistics to show that they're doing really well. So maybe you have 5,000 subscribers after doing it for a couple of years, or I mean, even 200 subscribers. I haven't personally seen it yet, but I've seen the low thousands, but I'm sure at some level it works even with a super, super low amount of subscribers. And that's basically just to be very authentic and to get people who resonate exactly with you. Um, I think people just call it like finding your tribe, finding a small tribe. And so you just be super authentic, show what you're doing. And some people will be like, wow, that's exactly what I'm doing. That's exactly what I want to do. Or that one thing really inspired me. And it's not about like, oh, touching and helping those couple of people. It's more just finding people who are more like you. Like you could find, you can make friends anywhere, but they're not really like you. Like when you're younger, anyone is your friend if they happen to be your age pretty much. And as you get older, that sort of narrows a little bit. They have to be more into what you're into. But a lot of it is still based on geography or chance or whatever. And so you could really find a tribe by instead broadcasting exactly what you are and then people who search for your most obscure terms because they're basically exactly you in whatever one way. Um, maybe you just have the exact same opinion that's super rare on one thing where normally <clears throat> you're not really going to find that. You might go to a forum online and make some friends who both like drop shipping or something like that. Um, and for me, Finding people who are good at dropshipping and even make a lot of money doing that, it's pretty easy for me, but it's very, very hard for me to find someone who actually cares about doing something cool. Maybe they're in dropshipping just for the money, but they're like, oh, this project's cool. Um, let me just share that. I have no intention of doing anything remotely close to that. I just want to dropship these useless Chinese items to random people in America random people in Europe, random people in Australia. And that's cool. I'm bad at it. Maybe if I were good at that, I wouldn't care about it either. But I feel like there would always be something inside of me that would want to do cooler stuff. Like, I want to build robots, but I also want to make money. And it's very rare to find people who are, like, into business, but also genuinely into robotics. Usually you have experience with robotics and you have no idea about business and you could build whatever random thing you think of and no one's going to want to buy it because either it's way overpriced or it's way ugly or most of the time it's just something completely useless. Like there's a lot of YouTubers with tons of subscribers, more than I would ever even want, who are just random kids looking at this dumb invention they made. And it's like, oh, I made this glitter bomb. Um, look at it spray on all these people. And then I like over-engineered it to also have all these other features. And now it's got an alarm. And people don't realize with that same talent, you could do some amazing things. And normally in business, I always say ideas are completely plentiful. Like having an idea means absolutely nothing in business. And what really matters is just the execution on that idea. But what's crazy is there are people out there who can execute very well. And this is mostly like the nerds, um, the people who are programmers and engineers. 
they know how to execute very, very well, but they're so dumb in terms of what they're executing on. I'm going to execute on making this glitter bomb when with the same technology, I could make like an Amazon ghost store. So that's what I just find super crazy. Um, there's business people who can sell anything. And so they're so good at that that they're like, why would I want to even waste any time inventing some new product when I could just make a million dollars selling posture correctors that already exist by drop shipping them from AliExpress or finding a supplier in China, whatever it is. So they're very good at that. So they don't really care about making anything better. They don't realize with the skill to sell a million posture correctors, that means you also have the skill to sell a hundred million worth of some actually new cool product that's not the same as what everyone else is selling. But again, not even about money. These people share these cool projects and then they make money the normal way, the boring way. And it's like they don't even care. But I think they do. I think they're just lying to themselves. And so when I go out there and try to find a tribe, I'm really looking for people who have skills but want to know multiple things. You know, another theory I have about business is that a lot of businesses are weak link based and strong link based. So you could have a weak link business, which means you're as strong as your weakest link. Um, basically, it's like in series and in parallel. So if you're as strong as your weakest link, then you want to make sure that you're good in all areas. So you'll have good customer service, a good product, um, good sales team, good marketing, good branding. And you can survive that way for sure. Then there's strong link businesses where it's like maybe you have the best marketing strategy ever and you can start selling the pet rock. Nothing else good about it, but you're great at marketing. Or maybe you have the best pizza ever and your restaurant's disgusting, it's outdated, but that becomes part of the charm because your pizza is so good. So you only have to be good at one thing in the strong link system. And that's where a lot of people get stuck, um, especially in terms of like the drop shippers. So they'll get really good at marketing and they'll make good websites, good marketing, and that's their strong link. They'll be okay at choosing a product, but they'll never go out and make one. They'll be okay at fulfillment. They'll be okay at sourcing. But you could come in change the product, make a better product that nobody else in the entire world has because you designed it. You could source it at a better rate. And also in place of sourcing, you could actually make products in America. And it's really not that hard. You could have better margins than China making your products in America. And therefore, because you're making it in America, you don't have to spend $40,000 on one shipment because you have to fill a container then get it all at once and then store it. If you just make it in America at the same, even a little bit higher cost, you have like no money tied up in the company. Because sure, you have a small like factory area, but that's really it. You know, you don't have to have tons of raw material inventory on hand and you could expand very quickly. If something blows up in your marketing, it's going very, very well, much better than you expected then all of a sudden, you could 10x your volume. You don't have to then place an order from China for 10x, and then three months later, you get it, and then you could continue with your marketing strategy. If you're making it in America, you could just switch your suppliers. So instead of getting raw materials from China, I'm going to rely more heavily on the very close by um, material sources. And so you could make a lot more money. You could hire a lot more people and you're not limited by those constraints. But the problem is people are okay with making whatever they're making. You know, maybe you're making $100,000 a year because you're just good at marketing and you sell those boring products on Facebook through Shopify. Okay, that's cool. Not for me. That's not the tribe I'm looking for. So anyway, 
that's the concept of why I need to do YouTube again. It's not for self-promotion. It's not for practice public speaking. It's not to document how great I am. It's to show this is what I'm doing. If you're interested in that, that's cool. I would love to have you in my sphere of influence, sphere of, you know, people that I could talk to and who actually understand what I'm trying to do. So that's about it for now.